hey, Robin, just what did it mean to you personally to go three for three in the shootout there and just to see the reaction from your teammates as well? No, I mean, we, uh, no, it was really nice. We've been playing really well lately and uh, just we wanted to keep building, keep everything going. And uh, this was an important win for us. And uh, yeah, it was uh, nice to make a couple of saves in the shootout. Next question for Robin goes to Brian Blessing from the Vegas Hockey Hotline. Robin, the other end, Jones was, was playing great tonight, and both of you guys were flashing the lever, leather, needing to come up with big saves in that third period and overtime. Yeah, no, I mean, um, he, he did play really well, and, um, you know, we stuck with it. Uh, I think uh, the last 10 minutes or the third, you know, we – it was a lot of back and forth and same in overtime. And um, no, I mean, it's, uh, it's a tough schedule for everyone. And, uh, you know, you get to grind through it and find ways to win. And, uh, you know, Stoney stepped up, scored uh, two huge goals. And um, that was a big one. Next question comes from Jesse Granger from The Athletic. Hey, Robin, cool moment at the end of the game with uh, Marlowe getting to shake hands with everyone and all the stick taps. Can you just kind of take us through what that was like on the ice? No, I mean, it's obviously a, a great accomplishment, a great moment for him. And, um, you know, it's pretty cool to be a part of and uh, playing this game. You know, uh, every everyone that's played in the league, you know, uh, knows what a grind it is. Uh, you know, it's long seasons. Uh, tough schedules and uh, you know it's a uh, it's a great accomplishment from him final question for Robin goes to Justin Emerson the Las Vegas Sun Robin it was a pretty exciting three on three and then it goes to the shootout I'm curious kind of what you think about the shootout in general whether that you kind of like the format or if you think that there should be more extended three on three or basically how overtime would go if you have the choice you think I like the shootout <laughs> Yeah, no, that's great. <laughs> Robin, thanks for the time. Thank you. For Matt, um, can you just kind of talk about what it was like being on the ice for, for the moments tonight and especially uh, before the initial puck drop when you got to give Marlo a fist bump? I mean, just a really special night all around for not just Patrick, but all of us to be a part of. I told him it was an honor for us to be out there and share the ice with him in that game. I mean, something that we'll always remember, uh, obviously not to his extent, but uh, you know, it was nice to be able to have that kind of uh, reception in front of at least some fans and, and our building is a, you know, I think they obviously they do respect the game and, and how great of an accomplishment that was. So I was, uh, we were talking that we were really excited to see him do it in front of, uh, you know, some hockey fans that appreciate it. And um, one thing that I'll always remember. Question tonight goes to Ben Goats, Las Vegas Review Journal. Hey, Shay, you guys have worked a lot on the power play lately. How nice was it to see you come up with two goals there to get you guys back in it? Yeah, um, you know, that was big. Um, you know, both uh, great plays by Stoney, um, you know, being in front and, and, you know, going to the dirty areas. So, um, you know, hopefully we can keep that rolling. We'll go to Willie Ramirez from the Associated Press. Hey, for either one of you guys, I'm just curious if when the, the, this hype of building up to this game and for Marlowe and then, you know, a bit of the pregame and then the stoppage, is it hard to maybe, is it a distraction and then get refocused and sort of take away, even though you got somewhat of a sold out crowd for you guys, but at the same token, just the moment, is it, can it be distracting or was it easy to just get right back into game mode? It wasn't distracting. I think we're used to that as professionals now. However, we did come out with a, a horrible start and, uh, you know, maybe for a number of different reasons, but definitely wasn't because of that. I think it uh, wasn't even really talked about much, but uh, once you kind of see it happen, the reception and whatnot, it, it was special. But I can only speak for myself personally. It wasn't, was not a distraction at all. Next question tonight goes to Brian Blessing, the Vegas Hockey Hotline. Max, not to take away from the getting the two points and how important the win was, but you only got about 900 games to go to catch Marlowe. Can you even wrap your head around how this guy pulled that off with ice tubs and just being able to get out there and suit up and go this long? Can you even wrap your head around that? 
no, I really can't. And, you know, we started kind of asking guys that have heard stories about him. It's funny you mentioned the ice bath because I heard he's a big cold tub guy. But uh, you look at his numbers, it's like 82 games year after year. So and he's a guy that can, takes a lot of pride in his body and his preparation. And uh, you see guys like that that can accomplish something great. They're guys that, you know, always do the right things away from the rink. And, um, you know, kind of hearing stories about how he uh, handled his career, you know, from beginning to end. And, uh, you know, you got to respect the guy that takes the game that seriously. And uh, obviously we all respect him and it was exciting to see him get rewarded. Guys, thanks for the time tonight. Thank you. Hey, Mark, I know you've been asked about Patrick Marlowe a lot this week. Can you kind of just tell us what it was like being on the ice for that? Um, yeah, I mean, it was special. Uh, I think um, in the moment, um, you don't really understand the magnitude of it. But uh, I think when I get home tonight um, and really reflect on <laughs> what just happened, um, I think I'm going to have, um, you know, a pretty uh, – you know, big thing of emotion uh, going through me to uh, to be a part of, uh, of such a cool night for him. Um, I know uh, leading up to it, I think there was like a bunch of us checking the schedule when we were in L.A. and uh, we saw that um, we were going to have the opportunity to play in that game. Um, I think guys were pretty excited. Um, you know, it's no matter the outcome. Um, I think we show uh, a ton of respect for our opponents, even though when it's a crazy rivalry. So um, I think, you know, down the, down the road, uh, I think everybody is going to look back and, and, and be very uh, honored to be able to be a part of that game. We'll go to Ben Goats from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Alex, it looks like you went up to Robin Leonard right after the game was over. Just what did it mean to you guys to get him the win in that shootout? It's huge. Um, I think uh, I think we lost the last one that he was in uh, in the shootout. So uh, to be able to go out there and, and get a goal for him, but not only that, but he had three stops. Um, I think it was huge for him. And um, I think throughout his career, he hasn't been the best, but tonight he was really, really good. Uh, like I said, all three stops, and it was huge for him, and he played well all game. We'll go to Justin Emerson from Las Vegas Sun. Alex, just to follow up kind of the question to Mark, just being on the ice with Marlowe, especially that uh, – after the game, can you kind of walk us through that and kind of what you guys said to him? Uh, I mean, he had to go through a lot of guys. So congratulations is uh, what I said to him. I mean, it's hard to even uh, say anything else. I mean, he's um, he's an icon in this league. He's been in the league since I was a year old. Uh, it's pretty crazy to think about, honestly. Um, he's had an unbelievable career and uh, to be talked, um, to even be in talks about with uh, a guy like Gordy Howe is special, and now he surpasses him. And uh, it, it's something that Mark said. It's going to be uh, – it hasn't really sunk in yet, but honestly, it's it was a really special moment for, I think, both teams, and especially uh, Patrick there. It's, it's just phenomenal. We'll take two more questions with Mark and Alex. Next question goes to Willie Ramirez, Associated Press. Guys, either one of you um, is – as far as the way you guys have been winning offensive surges here or there tonight, uh, finding the fortitude to just kind of come from behind, overcome a two-goal two deficit, the overall play and, and complexion of this team right now, um, just comment on that in terms of its you know, identity and, and heading into the home stretch. Go ahead. Uh, I, think, um, I think our team's able to win in a lot of different ways. Um, in Anaheim, we were able to put uh, put six up on um, on Gibson there, and tonight we had to battle back from behind and uh, went in a shootout. Uh, that shows uh, shows that we're a resilient but also dynamic group. That um, when it comes down to the wire like that, we we know how to win games, and that's going to be huge for us going down the stretch. Final question tonight from Mark Stone and Alex Tuck comes from Danny Webster, NHL.com. Hey Mark, can you just touch on being able to handle that emotion? tonight on the second night of a back-to-back -back and still come out with a huge win. Yeah, I mean, that's a big win for us. Um, obviously, playing the back-to-back, -back, uh, you know, it was a three and four. Um, those are hard stretches. Uh, then coming in, you know, you play one shift and uh, we get the, uh, the emotion of uh, the fans and, uh, and the honoring of uh, Patrick. Um, you know, you can, you can get a little wrapped up in it sometimes, but... Um, 
you know, like Alex said, um, we're we're trying to find uh, find ways to win in different ways. Um, those are what the best teams do. Um, you know, you find uh, different ways tonight. Maybe it was a power play that kept us in the game. Um, you know, maybe uh, Wednesday it'll be the penalty kill that keeps us in the game, and uh, and the five on five explodes. Um, you got to find ways to win win games uh, in crunch time, uh, and I think we, we we've done a pretty good job with that uh, in, in the last stretch. And um, yeah, I think uh, for us, we want to be playing our best hockey. Um, you know, we got to play these uh, these big meaningful games for for seedings in the standings. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <clears throat> Hey Pete, just what was that game like to coach in from the tribute at the beginning to the handshakes at the end? Hold on a second there, Pete. We uh we lost your audio there. Sorry guys. Good. Got me. Good now. Good. Thanks, Pete. Um great night for Patrick Marlowe and his family. Um you know, happy I had a front row seat for it. Happy we won. Uh, you know, I like the uh, tribute our players gave him and the respect for for the accomplishment, both during the tribute and after the game. So, you know, good night all around. We won the game and, and uh, got to be a part of history. Next question tonight goes to Jesse Granger, The Athletic. Jesse. Hey, Pete, you know this rivalry better than anyone. Um, how, how cool was it to see the fans uh, give an opposing player the, the kind of ovation that they did? Yeah, not too many ovation in this building for, for Sharks over, over my years here. So, um, you know, again, uh, you know, it tells you the gravity of the accomplishment that, uh, that you would get that. Next question comes from David Shane, Las Vegas Review Journal. Hey, David. Hey, Pete, just in terms of the game, obviously, second game of a back-to-back, -back, uh, six games in nine days. Did you feel like you guys just had to really kind of dig deep the last couple of periods to get to the finish line of this one? Yeah, we, we were on fumes tonight. Um, you know, you could tell from the start of the game. And, you know, I, I did think we, we dug deep. Um, you know, that's as fatigued as, as I've seen us as a group probably this year. It's been a tough month and particularly a, a really tough last 10 days. And uh, so, you know, the fact we uh, we found a way, uh, you know, I think is a tribute to our guys because we didn't have a lot, a lot in the tank tonight. Next question comes from Stormy Bonatoni, the Vegas Golden Knights. Hey, Stormy. Robin Leonard came up with some timely saves there in the third period. And then, of course, the shootout performance. Just how impressed were you with his effort? Yeah, Robin got better as the game went on. I thought in the first he looked like our team, and and uh, you know as the game went on, uh, he got better and better and saved his best till the end. So I, I think you know he he's got. Uh, I think he hangs his hat on that on on getting better uh, as the game progresses, making big saves in the third and overtime and shoot out uh, when the game's on the line. Um, he has that, that ability to raise his level, and I, I think he's done that all year for us. Time for a few more questions tonight. Next, we'll go to Brian Blessing, Vegas Hockey Hotline. Hey, Brian. Well, Pete, uh, you, know, you said a night when maybe you guys didn't have much in the tank. Are you running out of superlatives to describe the season that Stone's having, a 60-minute game, the penchant for the big goal, the passion? Uh, he seems to, as you want captains to do, put a team on his shoulders. Yeah, he's, he's done that all year for us. Uh, big moments, moments when we're, uh, you know, uh, we look like we're maybe down or down and out. Uh, you know, he, he's been there to kind of rally the group and uh, usually with a big play, um, you know, and that, and that was the same tonight. I mean, that was a, that was a huge power play goal or both power play goals. And, uh, you know, hopefully that's a sign of things to come for a power play. Time for two more questions tonight. Next, we'll go to Ken Bulky, Vegas. Ken. Hey, Pete, when you have the game with the extra defensemen, what, do you have a plan coming in of what you're going to do with Dylan, or does the game kind of dictate it? Uh, the game dictates it. Um, you know, how we've used him in just about every game in that situation is we've started him on forward, tried to get 20 minutes under our belt, rolling four lines, and then depending on the game, uh, you know, try and get them back on defense. 
you know, and, and, and double shift someone up front, whoever is really going or has good legs lately. It's been Alex Tuck quite a few of those nights, um, you know, but, but there hasn't been a, a an in stone game plan with it. Uh, you know, it, he's not really, really comfortable at forward. He fills in for us uh, and does a, a good job uh, for short periods, but, um, you know, he's obviously much more comfortable on defense and, and brings a lot more to the table for us on defense. Last question tonight goes to Jesse Granger with The Athletic. Jesse. Hey, Pete, kind of along those same lines, uh, Zach Whitecloud had some sporadic uh, ice time in the third period. Was that just kind of getting his legs a rest? Yeah, you know, I, again, I, I think everybody uh, was tired today. And, uh, you know, I, I thought a number of our defensemen looked like they were gassed so we moved cogs back to to take some ice time from some of the guys that looked tired and you know whitey was one of those guys pete thanks for the time thanks to all the members of the media on the call as well floor recordings will be distributed here shortly thanks everyone